Hello guys! What if your Laravel validation is pretty complex and consists of a few steps? One step in the form request validation, but then on top, extra validation with more database operations, like this. So you check one database table, then another database table, and only then, if it's all successful, then you perform the create operation. Question, how to ensure if concurrent requests happening at the same second perform the validation and all the operation correctly? And this is based on my previous video where I thought I took care of that correctly with DB transaction here. So all that validation and insert operations are happening in the same transaction. But I received this YouTube comment after showing that code in the previous video where I've learned something new. This is the case where I shoot a follow-up on older video based on the comment where you guys teach me something. I really enjoy those. So Dev Hammett is suggesting to move the validation to form request class in full. So move all those away from the controller and then use after method as well as using cache lock for correct concurrency operation before the validation. So I tried to expand on this code example and I'm really grateful for Dev Hammett for taking time to write that code in the comments. So I expanded into full working validation and I will show you the before and the after and I realized that there's a better way and that form request class in Laravel may be much more powerful. So let me show you the before and the after of that change. And also I will show you Unix command, terminal command to simulate that concurrent request. So before I run this, first reminder of what we're dealing with, the scenario for those who haven't watched this original video, Vending Machines API project. We're basically trying to charge the card by a vending machine for a specific employee to get some product. And we need to validate the card, the employee, and many more things, including two daily limits for employees. So there's a thing called employee balance for specific day, so points per day, and also daily limit of specific product category for specific employee, for example, two coffees per day or something like that. I describe it in much more detail in the original 30 minute video. So I will link that in the description below if you want to look at how that all project works. And now let's go to the before and after. First, let's simulate that scenario for my original code with this terminal command. I asked my colleague Modestas to make some research what is the fastest or the most convenient way to simulate that without any external tools. And he discovered you can do that in just terminal in Unix. So sequence of three operations with some more parameters. And I will put that full command in the description below in the YouTube video. So basically you're performing curl operation, post request to that specific URL with parameters, with content and accept JSON. So we will perform three concurrent operations and you will see why three in a minute. Let's launch. And here are three results in JSON. The first one, success true, the second one, and the third one. And as you can see, all successful despite all the validations. So in that DB transaction, we have the checks for classification limits for both of those tables that I've shown you. So whether we have current points and daily quota, and that should have failed. Daily quota exceeded exception should have been fired because for that specific employee ID that I've put, there was limit for only one product per day. So in that transaction, we're getting that product limit first or new. And if it's a new line, we save that into the database. Now look what actually happened. In that daily products limit table, that new line was successfully created. But then there was another line created for the same employee, same category, but daily count two. And of course, the ultimate solution for that would be unique index on database level. But in this case, we don't have that index and it didn't protect us. Also in employee balances, the amount of points is 442 and the price of one product was 29, which means it deducted twice, which is even worse if three successful requests happened. Let's look at it again. Three successful requests, three transactions. So transaction ID is different. And even the order of those transaction IDs is not in sequence, as you can see, 49, 48, and then 50, which proves that it's actually concurrent and it may happen in any order. But then this balance is the same as that balance. So one of the balances wasn't even deducted, but still returned success result. 
In other words, now the database structure is a mess. Now let me show you the solution based on that comment again, and we will relaunch the same command again. I've rolled back the changes on the database. So again, we start with 500 points and no product used for that employee. And here's the updated code. In the controller, we have try, but not try catch, try finally. And I'll get to that in a minute. We still have the same DB transaction, but in this case, that transaction is doing only the insert or update operations. So save, save, create. So it ensures only the creation process to be in the same database transaction. All the validation, including all the select statements to the database has moved to form request class. And look at this class now. We have prepare for validation where we cache lock specific process based on the card number that we provide as input. And if we don't get that lock, this means that someone else is using the same lock ID purchase card with card number and we need to wait. This will be the exception. Another purchase is in progress and this will be authorization exception with 403 status code. Otherwise, we get the lock and proceed. So this happens before validation in the same form request. Then we have regular typical validation with validation rules, but even here we have one database operation exists for machines ID, but this will happen already in the log operation. And then we have after. This is based on the original example of Def Hammett's suggestion of after method, but I've expanded it to full working example. And you could, of course, put the validation here inside. But this is a proof that form request class may be much bigger and much more powerful with private methods. In each of those methods, we pass the validator. And if something is wrong with specific data like card or employee, we just add the error to the validator object. And then at the end, at the very end of all that, we have failed validation. So we override the failed validation, returning all the errors with success false additionally. And this is important here. If one of those rules failed, then we release the lock. But then what happens if the validation didn't fail and the operation succeeded? Look in the controller. You saw that already. This is the use case to use try finally. Finally block happens in whatever situation. Success or failure, it will release the lock. And now let's see what happens if we launch that command again. We have three results. One of them is success true with balance 471, so successfully charged. Then we have another success false with message daily quota exceeded, which was fired by one of the form request methods. If we scroll up, we have daily quota exceeded from private function validate daily limit. But then the most interesting part happens in the exception above. So if we scroll up, the error is another purchase is in progress for this card, which happens in the very beginning of form request class in here. So this is where we have cache lock in action and the second request does not get that lock. And this is why I showed you three requests. The first was successful, whichever came the first out of those three, then the second was stopped even before the validation. So it didn't trigger any database queries to select the data. It immediately failed because the log is in progress with authorization exception, or you can make it 422 status code as well. You can get creative here. And the third request succeeded with getting the log because by that time the charge was successful then succeeded with these rules as well, and then proceeded to the after, and then stopped at the very last validation of daily limit and returned the correct error message. So by doing this, we actually achieve two things. First, shorter controller, which is always a good thing. So look at that again. So controller is responsible only for saving the data and then all the validation, all the select operations, happen in the form request class. So first goal is shorter controller. And second goal, much more important, is correct validation, even in the case of requests happening at the same second. 
Again, this is a lesson to me personally as well. Same feeling as I've been doing 10 years ago when I started Laravel Daily. I was sharing things I've learned along the way and I'm still learning to this day. What do you think about all of that? Have I missed something or did you encounter similar situations in your project? And how did you deal with those? Let's discuss all of that in the comments below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.